this is an important video. This is about Japan, Japanese salary men dying of overwork. And here in the West, it's just a lesser version of that. But men are just being worked to death needlessly. If they're unemployed, they, they're, they want to throw them off into the streets and let them become homeless. But if they're working, they, they want them working right to death. Now, this is a little clip discussing it. These are not dead bodies. This is not a crime scene. These are businessmen passed out on the streets of Tokyo after a long day at the office. These photos were taken by documentary filmmaker Allegra Pacheco, who visited Japan for the first time in 2012 and was shocked to discover that this scene was not uncommon. I thought it would be really interesting to yeah, just... These guys aren't even making it home. They're not even making it home. They're just so exhausted. They're just passing up the street in their suits. And no one gives a shit about it. You don't see anyone trying to pick them up or calling the police. They just look at it and say, yeah, that's standard. Just circle. Circle it. You, you circle things to raise awareness. Or well, I hope that she's getting permission from these guys to show this, because that's embarrassing. But also, she's the only one getting anything out of this, because she's going to raise awareness and then what? Nothing has happened. Which that she's made this raise video. awareness or to highlight something, right? To remember something. Right, that. Now, these guys work tremendous hours. Kuroshi <laughs> worked to death. Pacheco is far from the first person to point out the extreme and isolating lives of Japanese salarymen and women, or white collar workers. The concept has been part of the conversation for decades and has appeared again and again in Japanese pop culture. A recent government study found that nearly a quarter of workers logged more than 80 hours of overtime every month, and that one in five. Yeah, that's, that's 80 hours of overtime, not 80 hour weeks. Overtime. So it's, you're talking about 120 hours. It's incredible. This is abuse. Japanese men need unions to defend themselves from these disgusting <laughs> business practices. Ranking became the mode of dealing with the pressure. They go to the bar and they drink. That's right. So not only are they working themselves to death, they're drinking themselves to death. That ain't too good now, is it? Now, this is what really gets under my skin. This government didn't really address the problem until last year. They were pressured to do so after a 24-year-old woman logged 100... Yes, a 24-year-old woman. You see, they didn't do anything until some young beauty finally got... Uh, did herself in. Now it's an issue. Now it's a problem. Woman logged 105 hours of overtime, wrote on social media that she was, quote, physically and mentally shattered, then jumped off a building to her death. In the wake of the tragedy, the government took action, but only capped overtime at 100 hours, an amount experts say. Now, you know why they only capped it off at 100 hours? Because they know that young woman there is a rarity. She's going to be a, a small minority because it happens to almost all men. That's why they don't care. These girls would have to become like at least 10 or 20 percent of the working population that suffer this, that kill themselves before something would be finally done. Because as you notice, when you uh, look at these, just a minute here. All the people that this woman did chalk lines around, they're all male, aren't they? The women do not suffer this for the most part. You know why? Because they become housewives if they want and get the hell out. And this little documentary proves it. Female and male is a totally different. When they are hired, it's, it's divided. And for female, they're only for the paperwork. Mm, it was so boring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the easy job, the paperwork. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
it passes. Women are only and to help men. Did any of those women, did they ever... Yeah, they, they, they're only to help men. In other words, they don't get the, the hard, you know, overworked jobs. They get the lesser jobs. Did they ever move up, he's going to ask. Move up? No. No at all. They even don't call us women, girls. Maybe two years, three years later, they enter the company, they get married and quit. And that... There you go. The girls get in the company and realize what a shit deal it is. Their culture is. And they go, wow, it's time for me to find a married a sucker to get married to. And they have an early retirement. And I don't mean early, like 55. They get 25. They get smart and say, I'm getting the hell out of here. And you know what? When you marry these guys and become housewives, the guy's workload only increases. <laughs> they don't get part time jobs, as far as I know. Well, actually, they probably do. But the point is, it's the same old, same old. The guy only increases his workload to have a wife in his life, not the other way around. Oh, and by the way, that's why they call these women girls and why they don't promote them. Why would you promote someone who's going to skedaddle two or three years down the road when they have these male suckers that will put in 20 to 30 years of their life before they die? They can be worked to death. These women are smart to get the hell out. And as a matter of fact, this is how brain dead guys are. <laughs> it even enters the cartoon. See that? This is a fantasy cartoon where the man who's being overworked is, uh, gets this uh, magical girl show up at the door to, you know, take care of him when he works, <laughs> you know, when he comes home. And a lot of the guys, I've watched this series, by the way, Helpful Fox and Gun or whatever it's called. And guys in the comment section were all saying, yeah, I'd love to have this. And I was starting to rain on the parade and say, why would you want this for? Why would, how, this is not a fantasy to me. You know, they're looking and saying, look, I would be that beaten down, worked to death, Japanese man, just to have this uh, cute girl come over and, and, you know, make me feel better. I said, this is not, if, if you want a real fantasy, you would keep the girl, but you'd also get rid of the job. An actual fantasy would be, yeah, I quit my job, became a writer. I worked four hours a day, and then I get pampered by this fox girl, you know, that's how broken you know that's that's reaching for the stars for the average guy by the way you know so fan and the thing is this is a fantasy in other words what actually happens with this guy this work guy is that he comes home and he's exhausted and the wife is asleep with the children if they have any children <laughs> that's what actually happens and that's why that's why this is a fantasy you know, people, this shouldn't be even exist. They should be saying, no, no, that's just reality. Anyway, that wraps up this video. It's to point out that guys need unions. They need uh, a different perception of what they, look, I'm in my fifties. I'm, I'm working less and less all the time. And it's, the best way you can go. You might not be able to get out of it, but if you can get out of it, take that option. If it means that you're not going to have some girlfriend, trust me, it's better this way. Because the woman is not going to add to your life. She's going to demand that you work endless hours. So and trust me, life is better. <laughs> the machines are taking over our jobs anyway. So, I mean, there's no excuse for men in the modern era, working themselves to death. These guys are working more now than they were in the Middle Ages or the Renaissance. <laughs> My God. So, I mean, 
men need to learn some self-respect and get the hell out of this treadmill. Thank you.